Today we are going to take a deeper look at impact in studio 1. When you load impact you would see three main components. The first one is the sample window. Here you can see the waveform of the sample you have loaded in a specific pad. The next one is the drum pads. Here you have 16 drum pads where you can load individual samples. And the last one is the sample edit window. Here you can edit the samples. Let's take a deeper look into each of these. Sample window. At the top we can see the name of the sample loaded and the logo of impact. Below that we can see the visual waveform. We can zoom into the waveform using the bar over here. We can set the start and end offset over here. This will start the clip from a later point in the clip like this. Or it will end the clip sooner. Next we have add or remove sample. After that we can select the previous or next sample in the sample bank. Here we have 16 identical drum pads which start from B0 to D2 in your MIDI keyboard. You can load any sample over these and play them. You can solo or mute a specific pad using the buttons given here. Just click on the key next to the trigger and click the key you want to assign it to your MIDI keyboard. Change the second to the same key as well. Now let's take a deeper look at sample edit tab over here. Over here at the top we have the pitch control. Here we can control the pitch and the tune of the loaded sample. We can coarsely change the pitch using the transpose knob. And we can finally change the pitch using the tune knob. To the left we have an envelope which we can change to however we like and we can assign it to the sample using the knob over here. By default it's set to 0 cents which means there will be no change in the sample over time. We can go 1200 cents above or below which would follow the envelope. Here's an example. We can use velocity sensitive pitching as well. It works similar to how envelope works. It's just triggered by the velocity. Next up we have the filter. Here we have the cutoff and resonance like on most of the filters. The filter has a range that goes all the way from 30 Hz to 16 kHz. I think that the top limit is a bit too low because a lot of symbols have top end that goes beyond 16k and sometimes it sounds muffled. On the left we have an envelope and beside that we have an envelope control knob. The envelope works exactly how it worked in the in pitch and this time it moves the filter. Beside that we have a velocity knob. It works similar to the velocity knob from pitch. This time it just modulates the filter. Below the filter we have the amp. We have four main options in here. The envelope which controls the volume of the sample loaded in the pad, the pan, the overall volume of the pad and the default velocity of the pad. Below the amp we have some very important options. Here we have the stretch factor which controls how much the sample would be stretched. It can be compressed or expanded depending on the value it has been set to. Beside that we have an option called choke. When we click on that we get 4 options which are 1, 2, 3 and 4. What this does is it creates groups and makes sure that no clip from the same group plays over any other clip from the same group. So if you have 3 kicks loaded but don't plan on layering them you can enable choke to 1 on each of them and you would never play 2 kicks at the same time. Next we have the option for play mode. We can set it to one shot poly, one shot mono, toggle and note on or off. 
One shot Polly would let the sample overlap if he played before the earlier sample hasn't finished playing. One shot Mono would cut the earlier sample if the sample hasn't finished playing. You would want to set it to one shot Mono for most of the drum samples, especially for 808 kicks. Toggle would play a sample only if the earlier sample has finished playing. Note on or off would keep playing a sample even if you have just tapped the pad once. If you tap the pad again, it would stop the sample. Below that we have the layer mode. This is a really good option to make the drums sound more realistic. We can choose it to be set to velocity which wouldn't change the sample in any way. You can set it to round robin which would change the sample in really small amount every time it is played to make it sound more realistic. I'm not really sure about random but I think it just switches between velocity and round robin randomly. Let's take a look at how impact works with the mixer. We can assign different outputs to individual pads and then process them further in the mixer using plugins. We can assign the outputs using this button. And we can manage our outputs using this button. We have 8 mono and 8 stereo outputs on impact. And we can control them in the mixer like this. That's it for this video. If you learned something new, please share this video and subscribe to the channel for more studio and related content.